G'day, how are you? Just a quick video that I've put together in regards to solving one of the big questions that's coming our way as we enter a world of, um, of, of dispersed and remote and distributed teams. Uh, certainly with COVID, it's reshaped our world in a significant way, and it's forever going to reshape our world of work. And so one of the big questions that people are asking is, how do we separate work from home and where, you know, the lines are getting blurrier? And uh, I guess this session, what I want to take you through is just a little process around winding down and how to make flexible work work more flexibly for you. And so this world's really significant and has shifted and it's going to continue to shift over time where we've got these distributed teams that are working online and so on, zooming in a lot. And I guess what we have are pluses and minuses. The The big pluses are it, it can increase one of the three big pillars around connection to work and that's autonomy. Um, if we can have economy of time, so less time spent commuting and so on. And then of course, uh, there is great flexibility and regards to everything from how we dress to how we arrange our days and so on. But then the minuses that come from that are loneliness, uh, you know, but being outposted a little bit. There's certainly things we can do about that. Um, confusion sometimes. What is it that I'm supposed to be working on? And then this big one is, uh, around this loom anyway, is encroachment. So where does work finish and where does life begin and vice versa? And so uh, we're going to walk through this and uh, we had an interesting chat as a, as a team, our, our team recently, where we said, well, do we put set time-based boundaries, like I'm on between here and here, but it moves away from the ultimate aim and in some cases takes away some of the great gifts that, uh, that dispersed teams and remote work can actually give us. And so rather than try and set boundaries around our time, one of the things that we've got to do really well is start to create better boundaries. This is the big elephant in the room is how do we know when to switch off from work? And, uh, and one of the areas we can get much better in is practicing the art of winding down. Now, uh, thankfully, I've got this guy in my corner. So Nam Baldwin, uh, world-class high-performance coach with some of the uh, you know notable world champions of our time, as well as uh, phenomenal teams that have achieved success. And, and so Nam took me through a process, which I want to share with you with full attribution to him and his team. So, uh, this process, a process of winding down, generally takes place at, at, at the time when you want to start the switch between your workday and then your your um, non-work component of your day. So whether this was at five o'clock in the afternoon, whether it was you're giving yourself an early mark of two o'clock, whether it was at seven o'clock, whatever the time is, is up to you. Now, this starts by simply uh, a journal or a piece of paper and drawing a triangle. Uh, Nam's belief is that triangle is a good anchor and, and stays in your brain as a shape rather than just long form journaling. And then our first state, uh, step after that triangle is to write today's day and date uh, at the top of it. And then that first stage after that is to write down three areas where you've made progress in your day. So one area, second area, third area. So it could be that you um, got certain components of work done. You you cracked the first stage of a, of a strategy. Uh, you dedicated time towards something. So whatever those progress markers of your day are. Then on the left-hand side, write in three areas that you could improve um, it could be anything from physically, I need to drink more water. It could be um, from a work-based thing is I, I need to um, give Sally a call to have a conversation about this rather than jumping in first. And then on the, on the right-hand side of your triangle, you write down three things to let go of. And this is, I, I found personally very powerful to, to rationalize for yourself that things can wait till tomorrow, that there'll be expectations that you hadn't met or others hadn't met for you across the day. And this is a chance to let those things go. So whether that's professionally or personally. And then down the bottom, uh, what Nam 
uh, calls his mitts and pits. Um, so the mitts are most important tasks that you'd like to generate for yourself for tomorrow. And the pits are personally important tasks for tomorrow. So those mitts, uh, again, three things. So these could be uh, most important tasks, whether they're uh, work-based or, or um, other personal based uh, work outputs that you'd like to achieve. I, I want to write the first chapter of my book. I want to um, uh, contact X client or so on. And then the personally important tasks generally around health, well-being, uh, mindfulness and so on. And so you write those in. And so that in a nutshell is the winding down process or at least one stage of a really effective winding down process that I've found tremendously helpful. Uh, it only takes somewhere between five and ten minutes, but closing that book definitely starts a process followed up um, personally by having then a shower straight after it and washing the day away, uh, going in with that visualisation around it is just fantastic and, and really helps let go. So hopefully that's been of use for you. Um, any questions around this, don't hesitate to uh, ask and, um, and check out Nam Baldwin's magnificent stuff. Anyway, thanks very much for tuning in and we'll see you later. Bye.